So the first operation that we said we was allowed to perform was adding a number to each side of an equation and subtracting a number from each side of an equation. So let's look at a couple of examples of those. First of all, we might have an equation of the form 7 equals x minus 3. What this means, because the equation is balanced, is x minus 3 equals 7. 7 equals x minus 3. They're equivalent. They're the same. So what we need to look at is what function we would need to perform to the left and right hand side of that equation to strip everything away to leave x on its own. Well, the function in this case that we would need to perform is we would need to add 3 to each side. Now, I would encourage you to get into the habit of writing the operation just on the left hand side below the equation. So when you review these, you can see what you've done on each step or each line of your equation. So we're going to add 3 to each side. 7 plus 3 equals 10. And x minus 3 plus 3 is just going to leave us x. The reason being is if we've got plus 3 being applied to our minus 3, plus 3 minus 3 is just going to equal 0. It cancels itself out. So 7 equals x minus 3, add 3 to each side, and we get 10 equals x. Let's look at another example now. This time we're going to do 9 equals x plus 5. Now hopefully this time you can see that the operation we're going to need to perform to get the x on its own is we're going to need to subtract 5 from each side. If we subtract 5 from the left hand side, 9 minus 5 is 4. And if we subtract 5 from the right hand side, x plus 5 minus 5. The plus 5 and the minus 5 cancel, leaving the x on its own. The next two operations we're going to look at are multiplying and dividing. So let's say we had something like 10 equals x over 3. Okay, what we can see this time is that the thing we're trying to find, the thing we're trying to get on its own is x, and that x is being divided by 3. Okay, so that value that we're trying to find is currently being divided by 3. Well, we don't want it to be divided by 3. We want it just to sit on its own. So in order to undo that operation, or in order to strip that 3 away to leave the x on its own, I'm going to need to times each side of that equation by 3. ES for each side. Now, if I times the left-hand side by 3, 10 times 3 is 30. And if I times the right-hand side by 3, x divided by 3 and then times by 3, it's just going to leave x on its own. If we divide something by a number and then multiply it by the same number, we get back to where we started. We get back to the x. So in this case, 30 equals x or x equals 30. The value of x is 30. Now the alternative ones is division. Let's say we had um, 10 equals 2x. What we can see this time is that the thing that we're trying to find x is being multiplied by 2. And that's not what we want. We want x on its own. So the way that we would get x on its own is by dividing each side of that equation by 2. So divide by 2 each side. 10 divided by 2 is 5. 2 times x divided by 2 it's just going to leave us with x. Therefore, x equals 5. These also work for powers, squares and square roots. And the one that you're going to be using in the practice questions um, is finding t when we've got a value of t squared. So let's say we had 9 equals t squared. T is just another variable. It's an unknown. It could be x, it could be y, it could be t. It doesn't really matter. So this time we're going to use t just to show you that, that it really makes no difference to the process. So what we can see this time is the thing that we're trying to find, t, is being raised to the power 2 or it's being squared. Now that's no good because we want t on its own. So we need to think about what the inverse of squaring is. When we square something, the inverse function is to square root. So in order to get t on its own this time, I'm going to need to square root each side. 
okay, I'm performing the same function to each side of that equation. Well, the square root of 9 is 3, and the square root of t squared is just t. So in this case, t equals 3, or 3 equals t. Now there's one more function that we mentioned that we could do, and that was taking reciprocals of an equation. Taking reciprocals of each side of the equation. Let's say we've got something like um, 2 thirds equals 4 over t. Now because the thing that we're trying to find is on the bottom of a fraction, there's no simple way to get t on its own. We could multiply by t each side, but then we would end up with 2t over 3 equals 4. It doesn't really get us any closer to a solution. So what we can do instead is we can use a function called reciprocal. So we're going to take the reciprocal, and we're going to take the reciprocal of each side of that equation. When we recip a fraction, or when we take reciprocals of a fraction, the top becomes the bottom, and the bottom becomes the top. So 2 thirds would become 3 over 2, and 4 over t would become t over 4. Now hopefully you can see now that we've got an equation in a simpler form, because what we can do now, if we've got t divided by 4 on the right hand side, what we can do next is times each side of that equation by 4, And when we times each side of the equation by 4, what we're going to get is we're going to get 3 over 2 times 4 equals t. Now 3 over 2 times 4 is just going to be a number, because 3 over 2 equals 1.5 times 4 gives us t equals 6. If you're unsure, you can do that on your calculators. 3 divided by 2 times 4 gives us t equals 6. In some instances, we might be required to take reciprocals of something that isn't a fraction. Um, so if, for example, we had something along the lines of 4 equals 8 over t. Once again, the thing that we're trying to find is on the bottom of a fraction. Therefore, we should already be thinking in terms of taking reciprocals of each side of the equation to make things simpler. So what we would do in this case is we'd recip each side. But the 4 isn't a fraction. Now when we take reciprocals of something that isn't a fraction, all we do is we put 1 over that number, or that object, or that expression. So taking reciprocals, if it's a fraction, the top becomes the bottom and the bottom becomes the top. If it's a whole number or an expression, then what we're actually doing is we're putting 1 over that particular number, as shown below. So 4 becomes 1 over 4. And the right-hand side becomes t over 8. Now we can see the last step to get t on its own is to multiply by 8 each side. 8 over 4 equals t. Well, 8 divided by 4 is just a number. It's just 2. So therefore, t equals 2. These next couple of examples require us to do more than one step. So we have to think about what order we're going to do the steps in. And this is where the idea of stripping away becomes important. So let's say we have this time, we'll use 7 equals 3. This time I'm going to use the letter Q minus 2. So what we see here is we can't get q on its own just by carrying out one function. We're going to need to carry out more than one function. And this idea of stripping away, the first thing I'm going to do is strip away everything that doesn't contain the thing I'm trying to find. And by doesn't contain the thing I'm trying to find, what I'm referring to is this minus 2 here. I'm going to strip that away first of all, and then I'm going to separate the term that has the q included. So... The first thing I need to do to get rid of that minus 2 is I need to add 2 to each side. By adding 2 to each side, I'm going to get 9 equals 3q. And now to get q on its own, I need to divide each side by 3. Because at the moment I've got 3 lots of q, 
and I want one lot of Q on its own. So dividing each side by 3, I get 9 divided by 3 is 3. 3Q three divided by 3 is just Q. So 3 equals Q, or we can write that as Q equals 3. It means exactly the same thing. It's just good practice to put the thing that you're trying to find onto the left-hand side of the equation when you've got your final solution. Okay, I'm just going to do one more of these, and one that's going to look a little more complicated, but in actual fact, if we follow the rules, if we... Um, apply the principles that we've spoken about, then it will be exactly the same. Okay, so this time I'm going to do minus 6 equals, let's go for minus 2t squared plus 8. Okay, so it looks a little more complicated because I've included some negatives, but that doesn't make any difference. The process is what's important. So what we can see is the thing that we're trying to find, t, is tied up in this expression here, the minus 2t squared. So I'm going to strip away every term that doesn't contain t. So hopefully you can see the first thing I'm going to need to do to each side is minus 8 from each side. Okay, so minus 8 from the left-hand side, minus 6, minus another 8, is going to give us minus 14. Again, you can use your calculators for these if you're ever unsure, but minus 6 minus 8 is minus 14. And the right-hand side is going to remain as minus 2t squared. The next thing I need to do, because I want to get t on its own, the next thing I'm going to do is start to disassemble that expression there. And the first thing I'm going to do is divide each side of the equation by minus 2. Again, it might, makes no difference that I'm dividing by a minus number, but I've got minus 2 lots of t squared, but I want to get t squared on its own. So I need to divide each side by minus 2. Okay, so what we've got is we've got minus 14 divided by minus 2. Again, you can do this on your calculators if you want, but minus 14 divided by minus 2 is the same as 14 divided by 2, which is 7. So 7 equals t squared. But I still haven't got the t on its own. There's one more function that I need to do. At the moment, I've got t squared and I want t. So the last function is to square root. And again, it's square root each side. So when I square root the left-hand side, I get the square root of 7, which is... A decimal, we'll take it to two decimal places, 2.65. So 2.65 equals t, or t equals 2.65.